Take it. Welcome back to my channel guys so today we are continuing our look at brands that are being featured in fashion week yes it's fashion season and we are getting dressed up for me I'm being I'm trying to live up to my name being sustainably stylish by looking into my closet seeing what I could find and dress sustainably by sitting my buttocks here at home and getting dressed up and telling you about fashion by the way this is my outfit and in the spirit of being creative again this is a shawl that I like to wear in the winter but I like to dress it up as a dress so this is what it looks like don't ever let them get inside your head they'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you could get don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath my past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best so treat the worst of times just like a test If only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that As you know on this channel Sustainability matters And we embrace imperfect sustainability So I'm leaving you some tips On how you could be imperfectly sustainable Yes, that's what we're continuing to do This fashion season so I know everybody and their grandmother and their grandfather and their uncles and their aunties, uh, they're all excited about Fashion Week. It's the season to get fabulous, to be creative, to see the brands and what they bring out this season. And for me, it's the season to look at them, critique them, see what they are doing differently in terms of their social responsibility and for me it's not even it's not even doing a deep dive because yeah there's there's no need yeah you don't have to go that deep to know that yeah sustainability is not really at the top of their agenda it's it's more so it's more so profit and yeah we live in a capitalist system that's 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 the game that's often being played right so we we a lot of people play along and this is no way this is no way shape or form to look at others with a side eye that benefit from this system not at all we all benefit most of us not all of us yeah i was getting excited there for a few minutes but then it's true i realized that 99 percent of people don't really benefit so much from capitalism it's the man with the capitalist boss yeah a lot of us just support capitalism but guys I had, had to let that soak back in a little bit more. You see, I am not blaming or throwing shades at anyone that benefits, that capitalize on the, the system itself because it's there to see where you could form your own niche where you could carve out your piece of the cake your piece of the pie and run with it i just don't want you to sell your soul to the capitalist devil that's that's all don't get too greedy capitalism tends to do that fashion week tends to do that we tend to just focus on fashion and forget 
the detrimental effects it has on many of the people, the workers, the, the planet. Oh, the workers. Oh, the planet. Yeah, we are trying to find that balance between profit and the planet just so that we could survive, our grandchildren could survive here a little, a little bit longer, you know? Yeah. But anyway, today we are going to look at Off-White. Ah, Off-White. I've been hearing it. I've been hearing it everywhere. Off-White here. Black, white. No, it's not black or white. It's not black and white. It's Off-White. I love Off-White. The, the, color because I find that it's flattering on most people but today we're looking at the brand and this is a brand that is featured quite prominently in fashion shows and yeah I've visited the website and I know some people they're ready to put up their hands don't you dare go after Virgil Abloh because he's the darling of the fashion world. I mean, he made a name for himself. He worked at, oh, was he at Fendi? I know for sure he was at LV and he did an amazing, impressive job there. But he is the creator. He is the creative force. He was the creative force behind Off-White. He founded Off-White in 2013 and it just hit the road running. I mean, for someone of his background, he's a brother, you know, he's a brother. And it's so admirable for a brother to really make his name in the fashion streets, in the luxury streets even to be recognized and to be worn by some of the top tier content creators and yeah influencers and stars out there he could do no wrong i admire an underdog i admire somebody that really make a way for themselves as i've said if you could carve out piece of that pie and eat it and run with it Absolutely. I bow to your creative juices. I love creativity. And he's actually good at this because he made street style look absolutely phenomenal. Amazing. I love that. There are so many brands out there that capitalize on black street styles. They had the capital. There are so many brands that stole the creativity of so many black street artists out there, never giving them credits for what they stole from them, allegedly. But for Jill Ablo, he was able to create the space for the creativity of a black man out there and he makes luxury or he made luxury out of street styles yes the pieces are good and yes they are expensive if you have a thousand plus dollars to blow on like a, a dress a silk dress and a really nice pants yeah that is not to say that he doesn't have polyamide or polyurethane on polyester. That material often seeps into luxury. In fact, many luxury items are made from polyester, polyurethane, polyamide. Yeah, the cousins, elastane. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is that I'm not even going to do a deep dive, as I've said, because you could see from the surface that when it comes to sustainability, my brother, I blow, 
Virgo. God rest your soul. Love you, man. You did good. You made a name for yourself. But this is no excuse for not in any way incorporating any form of sustainability into your into your brand, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I saw nothing. Zilch. Zilch. He said his company benefits from the craftsmanship of Italian craftsmen. But I'm not 100% sure where they're actually made. Because there is this there is this thing now with brands where they're claiming that their items are made in Italy and all those industrialized um, keeping you in the straight line kind of countries where you'll be held accountable if you in any way um, if you break any sort of human trafficking workers rights rules so often we see many luxury brands they would do a little thing maybe add their plaque or their label on top of their items within the country and they are they are able to get away with stating it's made in Italy or it's made in Spain or it's made in France when in actuality it was made in a sweatshop in China. China. Yeah. China. But I don't know because the website didn't give me anything to work with. So, based on what I'm seeing, I am going to allegedly state that this Off-White, while it has some good items, some good materials, we are going to say that it's like any fast fashion brand and i think he mentioned on the website that it's also it does seasonal collections so i'm assuming it's four times per year but many of them could say that and then you may likely see drops almost every two weeks or every month that is fast fashion that's an aspect of fast fashion it's all part of the fast fashion model but when there's no information when there's limited information when there's nothing about sustainability, it leaves you to ponder, it leaves you to question, it leaves you to deduce, it leaves you to assume. And I don't like to assume because you know what assume does? It makes an of you and me. So, yeah. So, the fact that I do not see it anything related to social responsibility or sustainability and if i look on the good on you app which is the app that often rate companies based on their sustainability track records yeah yeah so guys that's that's just the little tip of the iceberg because there's no need to go to what lies beneath because it's kind of scary on the day so yeah and I'm, I'm a little bit scared of both yeah a lot of things yeah I've been traumatized by a lot of things but 
kudos to my brother for really carving out a space in the luxury industry. Hopefully going forward that he left the company in great hands and they would steer it in the direction of planet over profit and that in the future we would see more information with respect to the hopes and the dreams of what it would do with its pieces in terms of the whole life cycle of its pieces. It would be great to see this company offer in-store mending to collaborate with second-hand companies such as Vestier or The Real Real, whatever company has a reputable reputation, a reputable status, and to try to avert its pieces from going into the landfill by looking out for these pieces at the end of their life cycle, to go into research and development where they could use more dead stock items, where they could repurpose their items, where they could upcycle, where they could invest in the technology to upcycle their materials over and over when necessary in a sustainable way so that they could benefit from having not only a better brand but a more sustainable brand because the future lies with sustainability. So I hope that you have learned something and I hope that this is the direction forward for most of these brands that are featured in these fashion shows that they have a vision for a better future for both you and me and that people like us that are in this space would have more confidence in their ability to do better to choose the planet over profit. I hope that you have learned something and I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Everything will end up alright. Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like and find your limits. Don't be rigid.